Good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody? Oh, we just emerge once more. It's a lovely day in paradise. We've had so much rain recently. What day is it today? It's the 15th of October 2020, day my mortgage is due. Actually, it's the first day that my mortgage is due for six months because we had a six months holiday, didn't we, without uh, having to pay, having to, uh, having it affect your credit score. Thanks to the, you know what, that, that shall be censored by YouTube. So, anyway, what am I gonna talk to you about today? Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm gonna tell you a story. And it's a story about the National Health Service. So if you're a big supporter of the National Health Service, if you're one of those people that goes out and claps and cheers and bangs pots and pans, look away now. In fact, turn off now because there'll be nothing in this story that you're going to like. In fact, if you're one of these people that's just like, oh, I can't take it anymore, it's all too much for me, then I think you ought to just turn off now. Press stop on your cassette player because you will be listening to it on a cassette player, no doubt. But this is just something that happened to me yesterday and I just thought it was too funny not to not to relate to you. Because it's just, it's one of those stories, you know, uh, everyone says, oh, the NHS is marvelous and uh, we're so lucky to have it and uh, it's the best service in the world. To which I almost invariably reply, no, it's the crappiest service in the world and we are very unfortunate to have it. Uh, and then the conversation usually ends about there, you know? But I do talk to my patients. In fact, I, I love, that's part of what I do. I, I have a intellectual discourse with my patients, which thanks to the uh, uh, General Dental Council is the only sort of good course you're allowed to have. And uh, we, we have like some quite deep chats, you know, because they are, intellectuals a lot of them and uh, and we don't all have the same opinion and when you don't have the same opinion as someone else one of you is invariably wrong so it's a good idea to find out which one isn't it so anyway back back to back to the story I'm feeling like Ronnie Corbett now so back to the story so anyway so yesterday uh, a patient came in new patient extremely nervous um, phobia of needles phobia of white coats uh, uh, had a di very difficult uh, wisdom tooth extracted um, not been to the dentist since and lots of decayed teeth I mean uh, lots of decayed back teeth um, but, but still mostly intact you know sort of uh, anterior sextants and um, <clears throat> you know probably just with, with a few extractions and probably no dentures would be mu a lot happier you know and, and still would still look okay and could probably still chew okay and everything. So our local x-ray department, which is the radiology department at QEQM, which now you know used to be the x-ray department and then they call themselves the radiology department, then they call themselves the medical imaging department or wherever the F they are. Um, they used to be brilliant. I mean, used to be uh, offer a service which was uh, unbelievable. And what they did was that you used to um, uh, print, print off a letter and then give it to the patient and they could drive to the hospital, park up in the car park, walk into the imaging department, get an OPG done and they would get given it on a CD, which was, the, which, you know, I mean, it would have been better if they sort of emailed it to us, but I don't know. They'd give it to them on CD, okay, so they're still, you know, then stuck in the 1990s far as the technology is concerned and uh, they would bring it back and we would feed it into our DICOM system and, and hey, hey presto excellent OPG you know um, anyway uh, they were so fast at doing this that I'm not joking that, you, that they used to let you park for 20 minutes in the QEQM car park and uh, uh, a lot of patients used to say I was in and out before before I had to pay any money. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> bearing in mind that you have to think about the old system, right? The very old system was, this is pre-email, pre what happened was you had a fax 
and uh, what you used to do was you used to type a letter saying uh, blah 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 Mrs. Mrs. Uh, needs a wisdom tooth out please would you um, take her wisdom tooth out and for dentists like me who where the consultant would know like here's a here's a letter from what he what he knows what he's, he's doing he knows what he's talking about make this patient an appointment because it's not going to be a stupid referral or a frivolous referral or, or just a referral to try and get rid of a patient who they don't want to see in primary care. This is a, this is a proper referral, right? So what they used to do was they used to say, make this patient an appointment. The patient used to go in, see the consultant on the first visit. The consultant would say, we need an OPG. They used to go down to the OPG department, get the OPG done. The consultant would look at the OPG and say, yeah, book them in whenever, two weeks, three weeks take these wisdom teeth out brilliant system I mean and, and and brilliant in a way that by the time we and this was in the days of dot matrix printers I mean we used to dot matrix print out the letter feed it in the fax machine and it came out on the consultant's desk obviously at the same time as it was going in the fax machine but while I was watching the back end of the letter going in my fax machine the front end of the letter was coming out of his fax machine and what a fantastic system. So anyway, what happened is, what, what happens is obviously technology gets upgraded and so now they, uh, they don't like that system anymore. So what they've done is they've gone to an online referral uh, service where uh, it's all done by um, uh, a, a, a portal. You know, you have to log on to a portal and then you have to do your referral online. It's a thing called uh, Rego or Rego, I don't know why. Anyway, I don't even know why it's called Rego. Well, I suppose the RE is from referral, and then the GO is from go away, uh, you're never gonna get seen. So, but anyway, uh, it, it's the most complicated, stupid, uh, difficult to use, horrible user interface system. And the way it works was that you um, decide, let's say a patient wants to have a wisdom tooth out, they, you, you then try and refer them and they say, have you got an x-ray? And you say, no, I don't have an x-ray right? because I don't have an OPG. Oh, well, you can't refer them without an OPG. Okay, so how do I get an OPG? Well, you send them along to the local medical imaging department and then they take an OPG and then they give them to them on a disc and they bring it back to you and then you feed it into your computer and then you upload it onto our system so that when the consultant or when the whoever's triaging it, it's not a consultant, sees the case they can look at look at an, o, uh, an OPG you know bearing in mind that you've gone from a system where the patient definitely needed an OPG because the consultant said so to a system where every patient gets an OPG in case they need one right so so more radiation for everybody more radiation for you more radiation for you and not only that you know uh, the patient has all, all the uh, inconvenience of having to visit the hospital uh, solely for the purpose of getting an OPG and then and then bring it back to you and you have to then spend more time loading into your system and, and doing an online referral which is a lot slower than sending a fax let, uh, let me tell you anyway I haven't even started the story yet we might have to make this a two-parter so <laughs> yesterday uh, then, then what happened was the coronavirus came along so in the meantime a patient of mine went along to get an OPG under this system where we, we send them along with um, a letter and what happened was they um, I'd emailed him the letter and said like print this letter out and take it along but being like a young lad he not listened so but he knew that he had it on his phone so what he did was they said where's your letter and he said, it's on my phone. So he showed it to them and they said, well, that's no, that's no good. You know, it has to be on papyrus. If it's not on papyrus, then it's no good. And <clears throat> not only that, they said, um, uh, even if you print it out, it's no good because it won't have Mr. Watson's signature on it. And we don't want, we don't want a facsimile of Mr. Watson's signature which apparently was good enough when, when they sent a fax. It was a facsimile signature, you know, on a fax was apparently all right. Sorry, it was raining a bit. I said it was raining. My fish tank is so full up, it's nearly overflowing. I've never seen it like that in 20 years. Anyway, 
so they've gone from from being happy with a facsimile signature then then they say no 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 it has to be on papyrus and mr watson has to have signed it personally you know we're not having any of these rubber stamps or anything like that so and i uh, presumably in a different color because if it was black then they wouldn't know would they so i have to like sign it in blue or something anyway along comes covid and all the rules change so now they don't want people coming along do they they don't want people just turning up with letters. They want they want you to email them a referral, right? And then what they will do, and they will then send the patient an appointment. And an appointment really means that for an urgent uh, appointment for someone in pain would be about two weeks. That's their urgent. A non-urgent might be two months to three months. So they've gone from a same day service to two or three months, uh, but two weeks if it's urgent and they've switched back again now because now I said well what about them um, you know you verifying the signatures coming from the prescribing practitioner oh that's uh, no that's not the way the system works now now the system works on basically on an email referral so if you've got a if it's emailed or scanned or something then 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 that's perfectly fine so I mean that just to give you an insight into the bureaucracy and the stupidity of the National Health Service and and how they're like almost like the Russian army where you know they get a chance to blow up an American tank but he has to go up to the to, to the commander of the Russian brigade as to whether or not they're allowed to fire a shell <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> by by the time they get the permission the, the tank is long gone you know so anyway so so <clears throat> that in itself is frustrating okay it is frustrating Yesterday, this woman came in, and she came in from Ashford, which is, if you don't know Kent, it's not. It's about an hour away, 45 minutes away, an hour away. And um, she'd been referred, because she's a very nervous patient, and she knew someone who's, who's a patient of ours who told her how brilliant we are, you see, naturally. And uh, so I thought, I know what I'll do. I'll ring up the, um, I'll ring up the OPG people and ask them if they can see her today so that we can get an OPG before she has to go all the way home to Ashford because it will be a shame for her you know for us for me to fax over a thing and then and then for them to say oh uh, you know we can uh, we can make you an appointment and then she'd have to drive all the way back over from Ashford just to have the OPG etc so I rang up and got through to a very nice lady who said that um, if I could email through her referral, she would have a look and see what she could do. Okay, so far so good. Echoes of the old helpful radiology department who did it in a day, yeah? Because let's face it, this OPG machine is sitting around. It's doing F all all day. I mean, who has an OPG, right? The OPG operator is probably asleep and, and someone, I say, oh, come on, someone wants an OPG, someone wants an OPG. This, is, this is your chance, you've got a chance to do an OPG here. So, she says, I'll see what I can do. So I sent an email across, 10 minutes later, she's back on the phone. I haven't had your email. Okay, I said, I'll copy and paste it in uh, my personal email and send it across. And that way I'll be definitely sure that you'll get it straight away. So we did that and then we got an instant reply um, relay, relay not accepted. Okay, now uh, their address was a at nhs.uk address. My the address that my emails come from is not. We don't have because we're a private practice. We don't have a at nhs.uk address. And I think what's happened is the nhs.uk mail server has looked at my email and said not <laughs> not for you, matey. You know, we're not having you email in the NHS. You could be, uh, you know, the, the uh, <clears throat> you could be from North Korea or somewhere. So, you know, <laughs> anyone could get a Gmail address, can't they? So, so anyway, so I can't send them an email. So I rang them up and I said, look, and this is where it all started going pear-shaped. I got in touch with this other one, se second woman. And... Uh, I said, look, I'm trying to send you an email because I'm trying to do an urgent referral because I've got a patient here who's in severe pain, needs an extraction, and I wondered if you could sort of slot her in today. I didn't say as a personal favour, but I sort of implied, uh, you know, but what can you do sort of thing? And she's like, oh, 
she, immediately she started, oh babies, we've had another extra way. Someone else is on the phone saying they can't send us an email. You think there's something wrong with our email? There was that um, doctor was on the phone, wasn't he, about an hour ago saying he couldn't get through to her uh, email. Shouldn't do impersonations. <coughs> anyway, I got this bloody new new dry cough and uh, I'm uh, uh, a bit feverish, but I think I'm all right. So, <laughs> so anyway, so I said to her, look, the reason I can't get through is because it won't relay it. Well, so what shall I do? I said, I'll tell you what I can do is I can send her down, I'll print a letter off, sign it in blue ink, send it down, <laughs> If you can fit her in, then fine. Oh no, we can't see her today. Oh no, there's no chance of seeing her today. I said, look, can I can I just talk to this other woman that I was talking to before you? Oh no, she's not here. Well, she bloody was there because I was talking to her ten minutes before. But they don't they don't um, undermine each other, you know. By uh, if someone's on the phone, then that that person gets to deal with it. However badly they're dealing with it, you don't go and say, no, look, actually I know about this. This is, I've already got this sorted. That's not the way you work in the NHS. That's regarded as uh, undermining the person who's taken the phone call. So <clears throat> this woman who's been sat in front of me for about half an hour at this point on the desk. And uh, I said to her, look, I said, we have got a classic, a classic NHS jobs worth receptionist here on the other end. I said, there's no way you're going to get an x-ray out of these people this side of Christmas. So, anyway, what we did was I, um, and also the other thing she said was because this woman lives in Ashford, she said that they're not even interested in doing the x-ray anyway, but she should have it done at her local hospital in Ashford, uh, which is the William Harvey, and not at the QEQM, even though the dentist is in Ramsgate, and I'm asking them, my local hospital, and I'm asking them to do an OPG. And, and they say no, uh, because her address is in Ashford, then she has to have it done in Ashford. God knows if she was in severe pain and she lived in Kilmarnock or somewhere, uh, she'd probably have to go back to Kilmarnock to have the x-ray done. But that's the National Health Service for you. This is overly centralised, bureaucratic, cent central Soviet, micromanagement, bullshit, wasteful, slow and incompetent. That's, you know, if I had to pick ten words to describe the National Health Service. And you've probably gathered at this point that I'm, I'm the sort of person who's, you know, when everyone else is, is waving pots and pans and banging pots and pans and waving and clapping and drawing rainbows, I'm out there in the street um, booing and saying the National Health Service is crap because I'm, and I'm the only person that is because, you know, the, the, the NHS, which was supposed to protect us, uh, and apparently it turned out when when an actual health crisis came along it turned out that we had to protect it and not only did they not protect us they've given us the worthless rate in Europe they've literally done worse the worst the, the, the service that was supposed to be the best the most highly socialized funded no money no object funded you know nurses are angels type service has done has, has been the crappiest health service to have had during during this pandemic Anyway, that's another subject, and we could do a whole other episode on that. Anyway, next thing that happens, this bloke brings up and he said, um, I've got a tooth that needed root treating. He said, I came to see you about two or three years ago. You told me it needed root treating, but I moved to Canterbury, and so that's why I didn't come back to you. Uh, so, but he said, I'd like to come back and have it done. I said, so how much would it cost? So I told him. And he said, uh, how much, um, he said, I think I need a crown on top of it as well. And I said, well, you know, you need a post supported crown because it's a root treated tooth. He said, well, how much is that? So I told him, I said, that, that'll put the cost up quite a lot. So he says to me, uh, and I've got his notes open, at the, uh, uh, I've got his notes open at this point on the computer. And it says, as a social history, he's married to a radiographer at the QEQM, right? <laughs> you just couldn't write this stuff. So he then says to me, um, is there any chance of an NHS discount? And I said, well, <clears throat> and I, initially I thought that he was going to ask the question that everybody asked, which is, 
but can you do this for me on the NHS? Or can I get this done on the NHS? But in fact, what he was asking me was, uh, can he, by virtue of the fact that his wife is an NHS radiographer, get a discount on my private treatment? To which I did not say no, but to which I did not say yes either, because I was still a bit gobsmacked about that he'd actually even asked the question. But then, you know, for him, him obviously price was important. Obviously, obviously, but, but more important for him than most people, yeah? And as, as you'll find out later. So anyway, I said to him, look, you know, if you're, um, if cost is a factor, I said, I'll give you a couple of options. I said, you can have the root treatment done now, and then you can defer the crown and the post and everything, and then have that all done uh, a bit later on, you know, and then uh, split the cost. Oh, because, no, he didn't like that, did he? Because he, he wanted it all done, didn't he? So then I said, the, the other alternative is to, um, we, we do 0% finance. And it's not without cost to us, because uh, everybody who, let's say, finances a thousand pounds on on zero percent finance, we pay eighty-five quid. We pay eight point five percent. So uh, you know we're losing nearly a tenth of the of the amount. Now we do it because we we get we get work that we wouldn't otherwise get. So, uh, but we do lose that money. So I mean, but I said to him, like, if you want to, you could like split it over. That's hundred pounds a month over ten months, or or whatever. Uh, oh no, he didn't like the sound of that. So I said, well, <laughs> the the uh, I mean, I'm, I'm scraping the barrel now. You know, I'm trying to find a solution for him. I said, well, look, I can come in and I'll give you like a treatment plan. And I said, and you could take this treatment plan to any other dentist. Again, mainly, I was thinking, you know, you could take it. You can ring up a few private dentists and say, look, I need, I've got a treatment plan. This is what, this is how which wanted to do it in the Office of Fair Training. Because the patient will get a treatment plan and they would ring round a load of private dentists. Oh, it was so easy. And say, I need X, Y, and Z. You know, as if the next dentist is not going to possibly disagree slightly with the diagnosis or the treatment planning. And say, no, I need X, Y, and Z. And uh, can you, uh, can you, can you beat this quote? Can you cut five pound off this quote? But I said, you can take it to, um, even take it to an NHS dentist in Canterbury. Uh, and, and I said, and you'll probably get it for done for about 250 quid. I can't remember what the band three charges are. They were about 250 quid last time. Probably about 300 quid now. But anyway, it's a lot less than the thousand or something we were going to charge him. And, uh, and, he, and he said to me, oh, oh, no. He said, there's no chance of getting in... Uh, an NHS dentist in Canterbury. He said, I have rung every single dentist in Canterbury and I can't get in to get this done on the NHS. So there's this, <laughs> this, whole, this whole backstory unfolding, right? If you've got a little bit of, if you've got a couple of synapses to, to, uh, to use, where this bloke had come to see me, got the correct diagnosis, didn't want to get it done on the grounds of cost, thought he could put it on the back burner, it's now started to give him toothache or whatever. He's then uh, decided, because his wife works for the NHS, that he should be able to get it done on... He swallowed, he swallowed this thing, he swallowed the, the myth, hasn't he? he? Swallowed the mythology and the theology of the National Health Service religion and, and decided that he, he, well, he's gonna get it done on the NHS, only to find out that the religion doesn't match up to the Bible. Bible tells you you can get stuff, but in practice the churches say no. So, anyway, he'd run, and so he's coming to us as last resort. Last resort. He's wind the clock back three years and thought, when was the last time I actually got uh, the correct diagnosis and uh, with with a bloke who I would be happy to do the work, and um, uh, and and perhaps I can. Uh, get a price off of him which um, I, I might finally accept you know but which I didn't accept last time but which I might finally have to accept is um, which is and there's a whole thing there about um, <clears throat> about the private sector picking up the uh, work for the NHS and I don't just mean you know in, in sort of the nasty way that the NHS proponents say oh yeah of course you're gonna you're, you're, you're benefiting aren't you off the fact that the NHS is overloaded or is not functioning or something 
No, we're not. We're not. We're just better organised than the National Health Service. We're more nimble. We understand our businesses better. We're more connected. The left hand knows what the right hand's doing. If we need to implement a change, we can do it in 20 minutes, not 20 months. That's why we are. We we do more for our patients than uh, than the National Health Service does, with with much much less money, with a fraction of the money, with a fraction of the money. You give me half the budget that the National Health Service Dentistry has at the moment, and I could I could make NHS dentistry available and high quality for absolutely everybody. But <clears throat> no, that's not the way it works. It's all done through commissioning and. Empire building and anyway, I'm not going to get into that now So, um, you know, I said it's funny uh, because your wife's a radiographer at Q QM And I said and I'm trying to get an OPG done uh, at QEQM and I said and I'm, I'm uh, I've run up against a brick wall as well and uh, And so he's like immediately he's like oh well if you want any uh, uh, Anybody to put in a word for you at the QEQM, you know um, I'll be very happy to have a word with my wife. Perhaps she can sort out something for you. And and that is so wrong. That is so wrong on so many grounds. Because, first of all, he's trying to use his wife's influence within the National Health Service as a bargaining chip to get a discount on his crown. Right? Because the implication was, and, and, I, and I do believe this, although I think the offer was made genuinely and in good faith, that if he could unstick things for me at the QEQM that I might be more favorably disposed to give him a bit of a discount on his crown that's that was the sort of instantly what thought I've got a bargaining chip here he thought I've got a bit of a bargaining it's fallen into my lap my wife this bloke's got a problem with a place where my wife actually works I'd love to know whether his wife is that was the was the nice one in which case could more power to her elbow or, or the old dragon I got at the end I honestly don't know because I never saw her. But um, but but the other thing, of course, is just that you know you shouldn't have to rely on personal influence to get a bleeding OPG done for someone who's in pain, someone who's phobic, someone who's come to the dentist for the first time in 20 years. What an opportunity! What an opportunity to do some good, some genuine good for someone who's been crapped on for all that time whose quality of life has been poor, who, who's come in because, these people come in not because they can't eat on one side or because they can't eat on the other side, it's because they can't eat on both sides. That's why they come in. Um, and we had the opportunity to do something for her there and the NHS, as usual, as usual, turned to shit. Everything that I try and do through the National Health Service turns to shit. Uh, and it's so frustrating but um, anyway I said I'd send him a quote for the crown and he's probably going to come in and get it done and then I'll have to look up the um, I'll have to look up the contact email for the radiology department in um, uh, William Harvey and then try and talk him into taking an x-ray for her and in the meantime, you know, she's made a step, hasn't she? But instead of a giant pound, which we could have done, we could have really, could have really impressed this woman, could have really made a massive gain in her oral health in a day. And, uh, and instead, what we've done like a dolly step. Uh, and we haven't even made that yet because I, I haven't even had a chance to look up the, the Harvey details. And then what's going to happen? Then I don't know. What do they do? What do they do? What are their rules? Do they accept signatures? Do they accept not accept signatures? Are they on the rego? Do they? Does their consultant need an X-ray? Uh, does their? Um, do they give it to the patient on a disc? Do they email it to me? You know, I've got to. I've got to do all this. Anyway, that's um, that was yesterday's story. And uh, as I say, if you uh, <laughs> if you love the National Health Service and you think it's a marvellous system and it's working really well, and the only problem is it's underfunded, and with a bit of goodwill, and if only people like me, who see who are seeing all the NHS emergencies free of charge, I might add, you know, 
uh, in defiance of the people who say that we are we undermine the National Health Service. I tell you, we are the effing National Health Service. We are the health service. There is no private, there is no National Health Service in Kent at the moment. I've gone from a, I've gone, I've gone from the point of having every dentist being a National Health Service dentist carrying out dentistry to a reasonably high standard and, and having a very, very uh, powerful in, inspector that was respected and feared amongst general practitioners to complete collapse, complete collapse to the point where they're paying dentists to do 20% of their pre-COVID workload and uh, nobody's, you know, and everybody, everybody will go private. And they're, 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 in the, they're in the middle of going private now. That's what they're doing. They've been told basically, all the local NHS practices on the grapevine have been told to tell the NHS patients to forget ever coming in on the National Health Service and uh, the only treatment that's going to be done from then on is private. Because once they've made that conversion, you know, if they're turning over, let's say, I don't know, pluck a figure out the air, £300,000 a year, right? Let's say they're doing 50 private and 250 on the health service. And then all of a sudden along comes COVID and, uh, and the Chief Dental Officer, Sarah Useless. And now all of a sudden they're doing 300,000 private. Why would they go back to working on the health service? They wouldn't. And the most that she's done is ask them to promise, pinky swear, that they won't do any more private work while the NHS is paralyzed. I mean, <laughs> oh, the world would be such a different place if I had actually been given the job of Chief Dental Assault Officer <laughs> when I applied for it. And I applied for it. I did apply for it. So there you go. I can say it's all your fault. Whoever you were on the, oh, I don't know, probably <laughs> Barry Cockroft was on the committee, I would imagine. Uh, to determine his successor and uh, and then that'll be me roasted <laughs> toasted like a marshmallow already all right well I'm at work so I hope you enjoyed my little story and if you've got any feedback or even if you've got any stories of your own uh, let me know and I'll upload this as soon as I get a minute all right I'll talk to you soon bye